Okay, Desert Bearhawk fans, uh, I have here an array of tools. Um, I, I touched on some of them when we were talking in other videos, but I'm going to go through them all again so you know all the hand tools I'm using. Uh, dead Blow Hammer, uh, $3 from Harbor Freight. They call it the Dead Blow because when you hit something it doesn't bounce off, it's got sand in the head, it's just a dead thud mallet. This is a one pound Pittsburgh Harbor Freight $3 special. I've already gotten my monies out of it a hundred times already. And I use this to beat these flanges in here and or thump my misbehaving Labrador when she wants to be petted endlessly. All right, so there's that. And now I use that in conjunction with this piece of scrap wood to set the edges, yay. Um, I have here, this is called a transfer punch. This one is, uh, you know, three eighths or so. I use a quarter inch transfer punch because I have quarter inch tooling holes and I use a transfer punch to transfer the tooling hole location to my sheet metal. And the reason they call it a transfer punch is because the shank is perfectly a quarter inch or a half inch or whatever size transfer punch you're using and then right in the center, I don't know if you can see it, maybe that helps, there's a milled point that is dead center. So when you drive this down through the hole it's going to put a center punch hole right in your material right where you want to drill or do your operation so it helps you locate the exact center centering punch talked about the Forstner bit this one is an inch and three eighths I use a three quarter inch one for these holes here but the Forstner bit mills down the material forms a recessed flat hole for you to be able to put your tooling bolts through which are these guys right here I'll just pull this whole thing over here. So when your tooling hole uh, bolts go through, they sit. They don't sit proud at the bottom of the of the tool. So you can move this on a router table, or when you clamp it down, you're not putting undue stress on it. It allows you to relieve it that way. Okay. Um, fluting pliers. They make the flutes in the ribs, and um, they make these flutes right here. And you can buy these from Aircraft Spruce for like 25 bucks, or you can go to Harbor Freight and get a $2 pair of pliers and a 50 cent pin. And all you have to do is clamp these down in your drill press, drill a quarter inch hole down through the center, tape in, this is just duct tape, it's pretty simple, tape this in there like so, and then when you squeeze these down, the half of the pin that isn't recessed in the jaw, pushes the aluminum into the depression, the other half of the quarter inch hole on the other jaw, and you form those flutes. Two bucks. Homemade. 20 minutes. Um, shears. Cut metal. I think I showed you that before. They cut really super slick like so. And that's what I use to cut all my blanks out with. Uh, this is, I'm a third generation, possibly fourth generation, but third generation for sure. Um, shears and um, the family story goes that my grandfather worked in the factory where they made B-25s in the war and that these were his shears and he uh, these these metal shears might have actually cut aluminum that went on to B-25s during the Second World War so they went from him to my dad and from my dad to me and uh, if my son ever decides he wants to build something I suppose they'll go to him I guess it'll go to him by default because I'm not going to live forever. But nonetheless, shears. Um, we talked about fly cutters. Fly cutters make circles in wood. Woo! Fly cutter. Uh, this thing right here will remove your digits quicker and you can say, holy crap, my finger's missing. So exercise some caution using a fly cutter and if you do use one, because they don't come with any destructions. Uh, my recommendation if you got a variable speed, if you don't have a variable speed drill press, don't even use one. But on your variable speed drill press, slow the thing down 300 RPMs. You're not in a hurry here. Let that thing spin around and do its deal. If you got this thing whirring around at 1500 RPMs, you know, look out. It's going to be a disaster. So but this is the fly cutter, and this carbide edge is really sharp. Fly cutter. Make circles, make holes. Deburring tool. This is. Uh, this is needed a lot in aircraft construction because every time you do a process on aluminum, you drill a hole, you cut an edge, it's going to be burred. And anytime there's a burr, 
A, you can cut yourself running your finger across it because it's sharp, and B, it becomes a stress riser. That's a place where cracks will begin to form. So with this handy dandy little $12 tool, this deburring tool, you can deburr holes and edges just as simple as putting it in there. You give it a turn around and you can see it scraped off this little fine little wisp of aluminum. And now this hole is deburred. I can't cut my finger on it and you got to do that. So after I made my 48 rib blanks, then I spent hours just deburring all around every hole, every edge. Got to deburr them because that's part of the process. And you do that with the deburr tool. Fun, fun. And then finally, I've talked a lot about the router table. I have a very powerful router. It is a Porter cable, several horsepower, and a more one and three, three horse, one point three horsepower, whatever it is. It accepts a half inch and a quarter inch shanked tooling. This is a half inch laminate trimmer bit, and this bit is used to trim all the aluminum and to form all the wood pieces once I have a master to follow. This little guide bearing allows you to flush cut everything like so in the router table. And that's most of the tools if not, oh well there's one more. Um, this is a pneumatic tool, it's an air nibbler. I won't just demonstrate it because it makes a mess and it's loud but basically you feed aluminum in the slot. There is a pin, you can see it right there, that moves up and down. That pin has got a cutout in it and every time it moves down, it cuts the material, and when it comes back up, the material moves in another little skosh. It comes down and cuts it, and so on and so forth, but it does it at a bazillion miles an hour, and there's like 10,000 10, little tiny half-moon aluminum pieces all over the shop after you're done doing that. But I use this to rough cut these holes here, not to size, but rough cut them, and then I trimmed them with the laminate trimmer to size, but the reason I rough cut them is I didn't want that aluminum disc flying around in there and getting hung up on the laminate trimmer wheel when it was spinning at a bazillion miles an hour and then end up flying off and being a Chinese flying star and hurting somebody. So that's what that's all about. Excuse me. Air Nibbler. Harbor Freight. 36 bucks. Yay. Alright, that's it for tools. And we're going to move on to the next step.